We're going to discuss inspection analysis in this lecture, but before we do, I wanted to bring in a couple of notes on some naming conventions when we're doing circuit analysis. The first is when we're talking about DC terms, we always write for instance, a current as capital I, capital D. This would be our DC drain current. If we were talking about simply an AC current, we would write lowercase i, lowercase d. And this would be our AC drain current. Finally, if we ha are talking about a signal that contains both AC and DC, we typically write lowercase i, capital D. <laughs> For voltages, we do very similar things, except that normally we're talking about a difference with voltages, so we would write, for instance, capital V, DS, capital V, capital DS, and this would be the DC voltage difference between the drain and the source. Now at this point we're going to talk we're going to begin to talk about inspection analysis but before we do that we're going to look at an amplifier example so let's look at a MOS amplifier where we're going to take the input on the gate and we're going to take the output on the drain and we're going to give some values. So we're going to say that the DC value of the input voltage is equal to 1.5 volts. W is equal to 20 micro micrometers. L is equal to 1 micrometer. R sub D is equal to 5 kilo ohms. VDD, our supply voltage, is equal to 5 volts. <laughs> Mu N C ox is equal to 50 milliamps per volt squared. And our threshold voltage for our NMOS device is equal to 0 0.5 volts. Now what we want to do is find the DC operating point so that we can find the small signal parameters for the device. First we want to uh, check, assume that the device is in saturation and check to see if that is indeed the case. So let's uh, make the assumption that the device is in saturation. Our equation for a MOS device operating in saturation is equal to mu n c ox over 2 times w over l times vgs minus vt n squared. If we substitute all the values above into this equation, we find that id is equal to 500 microamps. Now we need to do a check at the drain of the transistor. So the drain voltage with this DC current is equal to VDD minus ID times RD, which is equal to 2.5 volts. Now we're going to do a check for saturation. So the first thing that we need to check is if the device is on. So we check is VGS greater than VT. And of course, this would be 1.5 volts. 
is greater than 0 0.5 volts. So the device is on. Now we do our check for saturation. So we want to see that VDS is greater than VGS minus a VTN. So here we have VDS is equal to 2.5 volts. And we have VGS minus VTN is equal to 1.5 minus 0.5. So this is indeed true. So the device is saturated. All right. The next step is finding the small signal model parameters for the device and making a small signal model. So the first step we need to find is GM. We need to find GM. So we're going to use the form GM is equal to 2 times the drain current divided by the overdrive voltage. So this is equal to 2 times 500 milliamps, or we can set that as 0 0.5, or 500 microamps, we can set that as 0 0.5 milliamps divided by our overdrive voltage, which is equal to VGS minus VT, 1.5 volts minus 0 0.5 volts. And when we substitute everything in, we find that GM is equal to 1 millisiemen. All right, so our small signal model now looks like this. Here we're just looking at the AC component. We would normally draw the R sub zero here, but one thing I'll note is that I didn't give you a lambda for this device, so we can ignore R sub zero in this case because we don't have lambda. And we have a drain resistance that would be in parallel with that resistance, which is quite small. All right, so if we write KCL at this node, we can write that zero is equal to GM VGS plus VO over RD. And we note that VGS is simply equal to V sub I in this case because the source is grounded and the gate is equal to VI. Plugging everything in, we find VO over VI is equal to minus GM times RD, or approximately equal to that. And this is one minus one millisiemen times five kilo ohms, or is equal to minus five volts per volt. Now that was kind of tedious finding that solution and what we're going to notice is that every time we see a common source amplifier, the solution is going to be very, very similar. And so what we're going to look to do is to eliminate the steps that we just took there of finding the small signal model and just recognize that when we see a common source amplifier, the gain is always going to be the same with a few modifications. So from now on, what we're going to do is we always have to find the DC operating point. No way around that because the DC operating point sets our small signal parameters. So we need to know all node voltages, DC voltages, and DC currents. Just to make sure that we can that our assumptions about saturation, for instance, are good, and again, to get those small signal models. So that's step two, determine small signal model parameters.
And remember, these only depend, ideally, on the bias point. So they only depend on those DC currents and voltages. The third step is, just like any time we do small signal analysis, we convert the circuit to small signal. And what we mean here is that DC voltage sources become short circuits. DC current sources become open circuits. Big capacitors become short circuits. At this point, we're ready. We would uh, normally replace the transistor with the equivalent circuit. But what we're going to try and do instead is take all the information from this point and analyze the network based on prior experience. Now, at some points, we might need to replace the transistor with its small signal model, but we don't want to have to do this often. And there are usually only a couple of specific cases that we might have to, to replace the transistor with a small signal model, one of those being when we start looking at feedback analysis. So in the next part of the lesson, we'll look at some of the inspection analysis terms.